kind of the progression. Our podcast is all about your guys' journey in music, and we'll talk about you know how how Tulane started, how uh, P- how Panama started, and then how you guys linked up and and of course roll, uh, this the song you guys did together. Nice. Okay. Sounds, Sounds good. Sounds good. Sweet. Uh, well, you guys are brothers. Let's start with you. So, where where were you uh, born and raised? Um, we are bo- we're from Düsseldorf originally. It's like in the west of Germany. Okay. Uh, yeah, like we are, we're actually like six years apart. Um, Who's older? I'm the older one. Okay. Yeah, and we, yeah, we grew up in a very like artistic family. Our father is a jazz musician. Oh, wow. Our father is a painter and photographer. So like we were always exposed to music and um, yeah, like we all had to learn instruments and um i i mean we both um started out with piano right yeah, right and um i i got really like deep into it and and was very like yeah into classical music and then i like decided to study music and yeah that's what i did after um after high school wow yeah. okay or is, is it just the two of you or do you have more siblings we have one older brother. Yeah. Oh, so there's an, an even older brother. Okay. And all of you yeah. were, were put into music classes? Right. I mean, he was more into jazz. Okay. Um, he, he played, uh, yeah, trumpet and, and the drums. Um, but yeah, now he's a doctor. He's doing something <laughs> proper. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. since you're six years apart, um, did you fall in your younger or your older brother's footsteps or trying to, to, to catch what he was doing or no? No, I think we were all like doing our own thing pretty much. Also, yeah. Rafa and I, like, of course, we had like a good relationship, but you know, when you're like a few years apart as teenagers, you know, you're in different worlds, basically. Sure. And even though Rafa was like doing more of producing and was more into electronic music and I was doing more of the classical stuff. I mean, we were both doing music, but we didn't like team up until a certain point when, when I was like, walking into his room and I told him you got to play some chords <laughs> and then <laughs> that's how it started basically yeah, really? I was, like, um, yeah like experimenting with like electronic stuff and I was like always like DJing and like the school parties or at friends birthdays um, and then I got into producing through a friend um, and yeah just like tried out a lot of stuff and then yeah Leo came into my room one day um, checking out what I was doing and yeah this was like kind of the beginning of our like musical journey but then of course like Leo finished studying in the, in the US I was um, studying here in Berlin um, computer programming actually oh interesting uh, but then when Leo came back from the US and we felt like okay this could actually work um, yeah we went like 100% into making music together Wow. So you came to the States, Rob, uh, Leo? Uh, yeah, right. I did my master's at the Juilliard School. Oh, and, wow. Yeah. Uh, I mean, so you... in Germany, I, um, I studied piano. Mm-hmm. Um, but then at Juilliard, I did this thing called historical performance, where you basically perform music from the 17th and 18th century on period instruments. So I was playing basically chamber music all the time, but um, yeah, you don't play that music on the piano, but on the harpsichord or organ or whatever instruments they had at that time. And wow. yeah, that was a really like intense two years. I can't imagine. Did, what drew you to that? Just interest uh, in classical or, music? Sorry, what? What, what drew you to that style or, or that that degree? I mean, were you just interested in that style of music? Yeah, I mean, I was always um, interested or like I was very passionate about like Bach's music. Mm-hmm. This is basically, yeah, 17th, 18th century music. 
and then you yeah i wanted to to find out like what what was before bach you know like if you study music like classical music you kind of start like Bach is kind of the earliest repertoire you play and then going like further back to like renaissance music or something like that this is um yeah I mean this is a whole different world and and very very inspiring yeah and to to play that on on the instruments that they had back then mm -hmm. um is like a completely different approach um, because you yeah the, the instrument also tells you a lot how to play the music and and yeah and also the tuning is different and yeah there's a, a lot of like uh, connection to musicology and and all of that is is very yeah it's, it's a great great wow. thing like That's I, fascinating yeah wow all right well okay i want to get you to you real quick uh jara so how did you get into music you're in sydney correct or yeah australia I'm the, yeah i'm up in the blue mountains so like an hour and a half out of sydney and okay. uh, sort of like up the top of the blue mountains so it's a little bit different it's like a subclimate it's like um we get snow in winter which is really rare for australia we're like a really oh, dry, interesting hot yeah. country and it's like I think it's really inspiring because you've got like lots of um, nature reserves up here so you can go hiking and it's just like it's more like Europe as opposed to like Sydney and you're only an hour and a half out of the city so it was really attractive um, for me and and, uh, and my wife to move up here and just like you know do something um, creative and sort of just pursue things without being in the city zone of like you know traffic and sure. and uh <laughs> just the the architecture is just different it's, it's really inspiring just being in a different landscape you know so yeah it's been good um were, yeah, were, you, as, were you born yeah. and raised in sydney no i've actually born and raised in a really remote part of australia up in uh, the northern territory of australia so when you think of australia it's a really quite a vast country you know it's like sure. and it's highly populated on the coasts and stuff but I, um, I lived up on the northern part of Australia, sort of in the middle of it and right up the top. So kind of near, um, I guess, like Indonesia. So I oh, was sure. in Indonesia. So I was like up at a place called Darwin. I grew up there for 18 years. And um, at the time it was like, you know, it was like a, a pretty big town, but it was like, how do I describe it? It's just very, uh, very, very much isolated from the rest of Australia and the world at that stage you know mm -hmm. was before we had like super high speed internet so um we had you know like it had its own sort of like subcultures and it was very sort of like i suppose outdoorsy in a way that you would do things a lot that were outside mm -hmm. um and we had a thing called like a wet season and a dry season so rather than winters and summers it'll be like it's it's raining all the time or it's like not raining for like most of the time so oh, wow it's, it's, it's tropical right it would be like maybe florida or something but without like the party vibe <laughs> and the hurricanes <laughs> maybe yeah well, we get cyclones <laughs> there we do get oh you do yeah so we get oh, wow the, of that thing and you know south of the equator we get the same thing where we call it something different and i, I think the wind would turn the other way but anyway interesting um, yeah, yeah. So it was very, very much a um, an isolated kind of upbringing. Um, you know, it's not in any way a central place of the world. So, you know, it was a pretty, um, you know, for a childhood, it was looking back, I, I'm going to be obviously biased, but I thought it was really <laughs> kind of free, you know, like I was, there, were, there weren't a lot of rules. It was like, I could just kind of do whatever I wanted to do, <laughs> which yeah. is good. But the correlation between two lanes of myself is um I also studied um classical piano from like the age of six or seven um for some reason <laughs> and oh, I really? started so you got it was piano the first instrument you learned though yeah it was yeah okay yeah I was studying to be a um weirdly enough a concert pianist like a person mm -hmm. that would get up and do that professionally and I, I did it for about um for about 10 years um you know going through AMEB we call it in Australia like the grading system and um but then I verged off into 
um, improvisation and writing my own music. I started writing music from a really early age. I probably, I probably wrote my, my first song around about the age of 10. Wow. And I just fell in love with it, you know, and I just sit at the piano for hours and I just improvise. And I, I just kind of grew because I didn't have the technology to, to record anything. I would just store everything up in my mind. And I just, it would become like a, I guess, like a, a memory bank. And I would just go back to the piano and remember what I'd done and just build on things over the years. And then, I don't know, it just sort of stuck. And then I just kept kept going at it and it kept evolving over time. And, you know, eventually I got to high school and I didn't really get much else done but writing music all the time. Like, <laughs> I'd be, I had my mass class upstairs and they would hear me downstairs in the music room playing. But, and the, the mass teacher would be like, oh, that's Jared downstairs playing on the piano. Oh, like, they didn't even care. They're like, oh, yeah, he's just down there playing. <laughs> I think they had an idea of what I was going to do and it was like, that's just what happened. <laughs> right, so like, yeah, that's funny. Yeah. yeah, man. So there you go. So there's a correlation there with what Tulane's talking about. The, the piano is sort of like, I guess that's what tied us, kind of tied us both together when I, when I shifting into the, when I received the, the instrumental that they, that they sent, I have a, an ear for hearing uh, a nice piano melody. And that's what was sort of like there. And it was just sort of drew me into the piece immediately. So yeah, it's cool. Wow. Okay. So two lanes, how did you both Leo and uh, Rafa, how'd you guys, you had this piece of music and you wanted to, like, how did you get um, Jar involved? Um, I mean, we do we do a lot of like instrumental music, but then there's like a list of like some vocalists, like our dream collaborations, and like okay, um, yeah, Jara Panama was like one of one of these vocalists where we thought this could be a really like cool fit. Um, yeah, I mean, we have been huge fans since like the always ep like this was just <laughs> such a yeah such a great piece it's such a great track like i remember listening to it a lot um like years ago and it was this like different time when you discovered music on soundcloud and like you you yeah like instagram wasn't really like a thing back then so there was just the music and and that's it and the name and um unless you saw someone like performing live like rafa yeah i saw i saw you like um on the berlin festival many years oh. ago like you were <laughs> playing before tourist i think um yeah. like a three man group um and yeah it was like a really a really cool experience yeah, that, was a, that was a really good festival. Like the that um actual venue was like an old aircraft hangar, right? Like yeah, exactly. a, yeah. called the uh, arena. Like this whole thing was was really sick. Wow. Yeah, it was a great, great venue, man. That was that was that was good. Yeah, it was a really um uh that was a pretty hectic time back then. It was like playing in a different country each day. It was like you'd be really worried about your luggage, about like, oh, what equipment am I gonna leave behind? Because you, you, you travel with your equipment but it's like it goes in like the luggage department so you're like oh i really hope it gets there because if it's not here i can't play today so oh, it's like, wow yeah it's pretty stressful time <laughs> so you play a different country every day because well, yeah, everything's so close is that why Europe, yeah, yeah, yeah 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 like i like i remember playing like i think like lowlands festival um did a festival uh in portugal um the i did the berlin festival i think that wasn't on, on that run but like you know, you would just hop from festival to festival each day. It is insane. Like, it's, it's really fun. Like, it's really, really fun, but also, like, super stressful. Like, because you're like, if you get one critical thing wrong, it, it can really, like, you've got to just run with it. You know, like, you've got to just kind of evolve the system so you can make things work. Okay. Wow. And yeah. you, you were I mean, in a band prior, that. though, right? Sorry? You, you Weren't you in a band prior to starting Panama? Oh, geez. I've been in, in bands since I was like 15, man. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. It's music, man. I just want to play all the time. You know? That's but, amazing. Uh, a critical thing, though, with um, with touring, though, and like, and and uh, for me, it was I had like a, a Nord stage, and I had like these, um, because I had to change over the power. When you're in Europe, the power is different to Australia. Like, you got 240. Oh, oh the maybe plus. Aren't like, the plugs different? 
No, we're like, you got like internal power and in, in like your little, in your keyboard. So you're like, you have to switch it over manually. I had like a screwdriver set, I would open up, but also you have fuses. So like, if like the power on the stage like spikes, which it does, um, if like it overloads or something, it can blow your fuse in your keyboard. So I had to travel with these different fuses. Um, and I remember getting to like Lowlands Festival and I was like getting on the stage, about to turn on my keyboard and my fuse blew in my, in my Nord and we were like late late we actually had to like there was no checking it was pretty much a line check i think and then you're on and i was like okay i think i'm ready to go and then i i, I go to turn my keyboard on and, and it blows and then the sound guy was like oh like his face was just like <laughs> like he was, the, he, he was melting and i was melting and i'm like i pull out my fuses he's like oh he's like um oh, man i'm glad you got those i'm like yeah man <laughs> oh my gosh Lord, the note is like a sampler as well so like it had all it wasn't i didn't just use it as a as a piano I sampled my entire, um, you know, album on this on this Nord, so I would trigger things in real time. So it, it, I needed the Nord. Like if I didn't have a Nord, I was like, I was screwed, man. So um, I'm just glad I had the fuses, you know. Yeah, the extra fuses. Oh my gosh, it's like you have to be, yeah, like a electrician and a musician and like everything MacGyver. else. <laughs> MacGyver, right? MacGyver. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> oh my gosh. So well, so you obviously, or you. Um, two lanes you were fans of of jar's work and you did ma you mainly put out instrumentals and you he was just a vocalist that you you were dying to to work with ryan yeah this is yeah i mean we we yeah we have been working with different vocalists in the past um and then we would write a whole song but then we ended up like not using the whole song but only certain bits like mm -hmm. sort of sampling um what we did in never enough for example or closer there are just like these tiny bits of vocals in there mm -hmm. um and and this is what we what we've done so far but then we yeah when when like we reached out to to jera and he was down um we we loved the song so much and then we like wanted to use the whole thing it was definitely um like a little different for us like as producers to to use the whole song right um and and not like focus as much on like uh, like an instrumental drop part like we do it in 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 the other songs but to like work carefully around that vocal so it really sits well in there and and you want to like yeah like underline that vibe of the vocal but also like add your like production style to it and um yeah that's a very like delicate work process um but we yeah we are very happy how it how it turned out yeah, it's a beautiful yeah. song. I was going to ask you, you that's going to be part of, or it is part of an EP, right? The Reflections is going to be an EP? Yeah, right. It's um, like we're going to release this um, reflection, Reflections EP on Bitbird, which is coming out um, on June 18th. Okay. Um, and yeah, this was like the last single release before um, we dropped the whole, whole EP. Okay. And is, is, is Jar just on the, is he only on the one song or do you have? Uh, we released one track um, called Another Time with a vocalist, um, Quasi, that we did some, some things in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, these are the only two um, vocal tracks. The yeah. other ones. Oh, on the record. Right. Right. But yeah, with Jarrah, it's, it's uh, the only track, I think. Okay. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only track, yeah, because we, we already had to submit everything. So it's, it's done, yeah. Maybe okay. in the future, yeah, we would love to, to, to like work on some more. <laughs> yeah, out something. Um, well, I'd love to hear how the the song kind of came about and how you you guys created it and then you got it over to Jara and how he was able to. And I want to hear Jara's, you know, experience with receiving the song and 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 how you guys like eventually decided let's let's do this. Yeah, so it was, we had first this like purely piano piece. Right. And this one, this we turned like into a like instrumental that we like lay down like a kick. 
um, and some like percussions. Like we at that time we recorded like a lot of um, percussion ourselves here in the studio. Like we started doing that with this EP um, that we recorded all the percussion and like drums that we like do everything here in the studio. The shakers, um, the claps. It just has like a very organic feel to it that you can't recreate easily with like going through sample banks. I mean, we also use like modular equipment for like percussions because yeah, like it's all about like these step sequences where you can like set different uh, like attack or or like, yeah, you can change the envelope on, on each step basically. And that makes it very dynamic and sound like almost like a real player, but of course you can do stuff that can't be done on on like an actual drum set or mm -hmm. right. but yeah it started with this maybe i can play the, the piano. yeah i'd love to hear it um you hear this yeah okay uh so it was kind of this thing i think i can switch uh yeah oh wow dope <laughs> kind of the progression yeah oh wow that is beautiful i love that piano too wow <laughs> thanks yeah we we used like this felt layer a lot to make make the sound like softer and more intimate uh -huh. and uh yeah we also recorded that piano for the actual song really um, yeah without the felt layer i mean some things with but i think the main chords we did without to Give it a little bit more punch uh -huh. um, but yeah that was the initial piece and then we built around that and added a beat and um yeah that was how the instrumental came to life and uh what we sent to jara and then so you get it how do you how do you guys make you just tried to what send him a dm on instagram like how did you get the <laughs> initial conversation going i think on instagram yeah i was oh like, really <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, hey, um, yeah we'd love to work on something together and then yeah jara said yeah for, for sure like and then we sent a couple of instrumentals i think right yeah it was we like, sent like yeah. a playlist yeah um yeah. i mean usually we are very bad with demos i think they are like at a very very early stage when we send them out we don't like to like overdo it you know we like this certain rawness to it and yeah we're glad when when someone gets it that it's not like the final track or anything but just something to work with and either you feel it or not and yeah we, we were very glad that um yeah jara picked this one because we also thought this would be a great great fit right okay so jar you had like a pick of of, of multiple songs to, to to pick through to see which one you wanted to work on yeah like um yeah depending like depending on you know what producer or artist i'm you know collaborating with um they might have a bunch sometimes i might have some ideas and i send those over like oh. um it's usually pretty open-ended the way you know i tend to all you know we work together um in this case yeah it was like there was like three um like different sort of like takes like vibes which is really good and this one just like to me really stood out because i said like a piano when i heard that melody that you just heard i was like oh you yeah know, like it really captured my imagination and it's just something really like pure in the melody and the and the like the chordal progression and then me being a piano player i would um you know i would sit down and then i'd take you know the the stems of the of what the uh, two lanes have got and then I would sort of like being a producer of myself I would then reproduce in my own way you know like I would I've, I've got my own way of recording pianos um and so I, I started using my own pianos um and and just picking bits and pieces that I felt 
really connected and sort of, you know, I guess push those parts a bit more like the modular, the modular step step thing was beautiful. I, I mean, that, that sequence was really captivating as well um, with the piano. Then I started like putting in some piano that was just chords. So I took out the melody, kept the chords in the left hand. So right hand had the chord, left hand had an octave. And then I would, um, for me, I use a program um, called, uh, I have a few different programs. I use Keyscape a lot um, for sample pianos. It's like it's like a sampled um, Yamaha C7. So it's like a, C7 is like a conservatorium grand piano. Okay. And then I basically from there, I can filter out kind of like the felt piano vibe um, as well, where I can filter out the highs and drop it right back. Um, so it's just mainly the, the low mids. Um, so I can control the piano and it's, it's dynamics a lot more. And then basically, you know, I worked on it and then the vocals sort of came after that. Once I had sort of like the instrumental sitting in a place where I was like, cool, um, this is ready for vocals. So then I just sent them like a rough, what I always do with vocals is I don't, I don't like come up with English words to start with. I'll, I'll just like come up with raw melodies. I'll basically sing over the top and I'll spend sometimes maybe a week just send it like singing raw melodies like usually over a three three hour window because my voice gets tired so sure. I'll, do a three hour, I'll do a three hour sort of session take a break then i'll do some production for the rest of the day maybe and then hit it again the next day and maybe do that for a week and then i'll basically comp at the end of it i'll comp in the morning each day so i'll come in in the morning with fresh ears pick out the melodies and then sort of like move on if i need to move on to the next you know, vocal sort of thing. And then basically, yeah, the, sort of the, the song, you know, as far as my perspective is, you know, with the with the vocal sort of comes together. And then I've got, a, you know, in about a week, I've got a draft. Usually if I'm, if I'm like flowing, then I'll send it over to two lanes and they'll be like, yeah, we love it. Or, you know, like that sucks and let's go again. But, <laughs> <laughs> but no, no, it's, it's generally, we love it, which is great. So, um, and it was, you know, they obviously you guys liked it, which is great um so yeah that's, that's pretty much my process man oh except that when, once they if they do like it which they did in this case it was like i had to go back and then i had to which is a really challenging part turn all those raw melodies into actual like um words yeah so give, give context as far as the lyricism is concerned and i have a um a sort of a way i work which is kind of unique i suppose i remember my wife telling me she's like how the how the hell did you come up with this process i'm like i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but basically i pick out like the, the words right they have vowels like there's vowel sounds to the words in the in the raw melodies and i i, I look at the vowel sounds and then i i pick out those vowels and i look for rhyming vowels that are actually actual words and then i just build my song around the vowels and eventually it becomes this like the, the context sort of comes together over time it's it's never nonsense it's always there's always a meaning behind it but it usually just takes time for the the whole song meaning to sort of like bind together. It's never, in, it's like, it just takes a few, I don't know, it just seems to take a little while before it all come together. But, but the actual lyrics, like I said, they're built around vowels. And then I sort of like, look at what words suit those like, you know, out. cause if you're doing like oohs, ahs or mm -hmm. es, they, they turn into words. Right. So if, I hope that makes sense. So those No, it sure does. You know, I, I understand it. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it's the different way of working. I don't, yeah, I don't have like a lyric sheet. I just sort of like, it just evolves over time. <laughs> okay. And then when, like, that's fascinating to me. So you do, uh, two lanes, when you send the, when you send over the instrumentals and you just kind of let Jara go to town on it, like, do you, like when, if he sends back, like, do you even, like, do, do the lyrics even really, like, at that point, do you just kind of let him do what he's going to do? like lyrically um yeah i would say um i mean like if you do a session with someone in the room with a mm -hmm. vocalist there's of course like a little bit more interaction right like collaboration in that sense but since it was like this like sending it back and forth um and since we like loved the song like from the start it wasn't um yeah it was more or less like that we had this vocal it was sitting so well. Um, we loved the whole vibe and yeah, it was like a, a no brainer somehow. Yeah. And also like what you just described makes a lot of sense because um, you can really hear that, that um, 
yeah like the the vocals they have a very like um instrumental quality to them i would say mm -hmm. um like and what you just described that you start with like the instrumental rework that and then uh incorporate the the vocal as a melody instrument first and then add words i think this is like yeah that makes it very like i don't know natural and and sit very well with the music and um and then of course like the songwriting style is something we also um appreciate a lot like because it has this very uh, ethereal vibe to it and there are a lot of metaphors and this is also something yeah. that we really like if it's yeah when when there's a lot to a lot of room for interpretation and when it's not all like you know spelled out mm -hmm. and in your face but there's like a lot of room to like for the music to breathe and for the listener to to imagine what they yeah want to imagine or what they yeah, what the song tr uh, triggers oh that's that's fascinating because i would I don't, I, I don't know how the process i mean i'm sure everybody has a different process like I wasn't, I was, I didn't know if you, like you two wrote like the lyrics and everything and just kind of sent it to the jar and were like, Hey, this is, I love your voice. Can you sing this piece? Right. Like, I mean, you we, know what I mean? Yeah. We have worked like this in the past uh, with people that we wrote something and then send it out, but never like full songs, but only like a few lines that we had in mind and maybe and then said like could you like incorporate that into a full song but in that case you know like we like it's a lot about trust and and yeah we we knew that um it's sometimes better like not to give a, too much uh like direction you know and just you know like see what what comes back and um yeah, in that case, it was the first time that we finished a song like that by sending it back and forth. And yeah, and there are not only like, yeah, like you added the guitar, right? And even like like the kick and the bass and everything. So, yeah, and also like some transitional chords, uh, like the, yeah, like the chords in between, you change to like the bass line. Um, and then those were like very clever changes and, and yeah, we, we kept all those changes and also that guitar was like super special. It was a little yeah. bit rumbly and yeah. kind of yeah. like weird, but, yeah. and then we tried to recreate it, you know, and, and, yeah. and try to make a clean take with the same, like, but it never Notes, works but it, it never yeah, worked yeah. and then we just kept this and and asked you to like change a few notes and then you oh i don't yeah. know what you did but you did something <laughs> <laughs> the guitar is still in there <laughs> yeah yeah um, yeah it's like the um the process that we're talking about i don't know i don't i don't think it's a standard like process like we just that's how it always seems to go like people are like you know do you do you just like sing you know sing you know and i don't generally do that it's like i do i just do what i do which is you know what we're just describing like this whole process which is really rewarding like you know working with you guys and you guys being open to to trusting in like you know the interpretation of the original idea um which is which is really fantastic to go down um into that like rabbit hole and sort of come out you know the other side because it's like it's like you know when you go into that creative space you know like it's it's fantastic and then you also have to wrestle with it for a while too like you know you guys going in and like spending more time and then just sort of like i suppose like getting into it and just 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 turning it into a finished piece of music and that can be like a really challenging prospect you know compared to the original conception of the idea which is like can be so effortless you know right yeah totally and we actually had like a different version too that we never sent out to anyone. <laughs> um, so yeah, no. Usually we we have like 
we make lots of different versions until we go with one but then right. we always like listen back to like the to the original idea that that yeah we, the first idea and we always thought yeah that's it that's so natural that's so flowing and then yeah we let um and it's also like yeah we were very glad that it's not like too pop in that sense there are yep. there's a lot of like you know, like tension here and there harmonically and between the, um, like the voice and, and yeah, it makes it, yeah, they're like very, in a very subtle way, uh, a lot is happening. And this is what we, uh, yeah, we love a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. And I'm sure Jar, that's probably pretty, it must be difficult i mean in the sense that like they're handing you this piece of art and then you're like okay well i'm gonna add this piece and this piece and this piece it might get a little dicey there sometimes i would think right you, and they might come back and be like what are you doing like why are you adding all this stuff but obviously yeah, it's like brilliant that. and they love what you did but is that ever a like a you know question in your head i guess yeah like you sometimes get a little bit worried about like stepping on on someone's toes you know like yeah. um, but generally like um you know when when i when i work um, collaborate with um, people that's like they know they kind of have an, have an idea of like they're a bit more trusting some people are like really surprised they're like oh I didn't know that you're like a you know that you're a producer as well it's like I don't think so they get sometimes they get surprised um, depending and then other people are like they know what I'm about um, and I also tend to work with like you know if I if I put up a relationship with artists I tend to just keep writing it with artists that I just love because you know I trust it's the trust thing it's like trust trust for me is one of the most important things like if you can if you trust with that relationship that you have with that artist then like that that is such a meaningful thing then you can develop and, and build on that um and I, I tend to try I, I just tend to work with people you know repeatedly that I trust because I like building up that relationship and um, I feel like you can you can just go to some really interesting places together um with that trust like when you when you first start working with with a, with a producer it's like it can be a little bit um like you said like worried about treading on people's toes and also um i guess it, it it's a pretty ugly word to say but like wasting time like you know you invest a lot of your heart into something right and, and they could just say okay. we don't like it well it doesn't happen to me a lot at, at, at my you know at my level now um but i would say it would be very very different for someone who's starting out and doesn't have the, that level of trust probably through you know respect gained from you know being around or, or achieving certain things so I can imagine that it would be very difficult so it's like it's tough you know like it's 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 tough to put your heart on the line and and bear your soul um and 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 you know even with you know, two lanes guys like it's it's you're putting yourself out there and um you know we all we all start from from zero at one point um you know so i i just think yeah it's at it, this at this you know there's so much choice with technology at the moment with so much new new music coming out in the world then streaming's growing all the time that it's very hard for an artist to be it can be very hard for an artist producer to be heard so uh, you know it, it just blows my mind that um you know we can collaborate and and it's heard by you know millions of people and it, i don't right. know i just, I'm still trying to get my head around like success, you know? <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like I said, the song is incredible and it's, it's, yeah, it's doing awesome online as far as streaming numbers go. Um, I'm curious if, if two things, like, is this something that you do, did prior to the pandemic? Would you, would you collaborate with people this way, like over technology or over Zoom or is this all kind of, and same with you, uh, Jara, I would guess, like, has that kind of, created a, an easier work environment for you thinking like now you can work with people all over the place they all understand zoom and they understand you know working over sending songs to each other or is this kind of new new water for all of you i mean to to like um for us to be honest we always prefer to be in a room to like okay. um, to like write and to really work on this like details of like how to end a phrase or these like really small timing things um but yeah i mean we're always open to to try out different ways to like collaborate with with people and yeah i think um 
yeah they really work well in this in this case for sure yeah i mean we used to do like lots of riding trips that we would go to like la for a month or two and then you know ride with a lot of people and and they come from different worlds you know some are very in this pop world and they write top lines for for big acts and this is like a very different sort of working process than working with people who you know like want to like express something that is within them that is extremely personal and it doesn't work always in this like time frame of maybe four or five hours of like this session you know mm -hmm. maybe you hear a lot of potential and you think this could go really well but you would need maybe two or three more days until you come up with something so I think the, the working process is always different, like depending on what you're looking for and, and what the other person is looking for. And, and yeah, for us, it's, a, like it's, it's definitely a very challenging thing to, to always, yeah, like, or to get something that we really want to work with. Mm -hmm. um i think with vocals since it's such a like present thing in a track i think it really needs to um yeah like you really need to be into it um and this is why we haven't really um worked over zoom or like via like sending things back and forth so far because we thought okay maybe this is like even more difficult to get something like you know something you want to work with out of that process um but i mean in this case it, it was just not possible you know to, mm -hmm. to set up a session and especially during the pandemic um and so we just went for it and this was kind of the first time that we yeah finished a song like this wow that's amazing. I didn't know if this was something that you guys did often, but that's that's incredible that this is kind of the first, or that it is your first first. Yeah, time. it is. It's yeah. just, it is the first, first time. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> what about you, Jara? Have you d written over yeah. Zoom or done this like send back process before? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. It's okay. Been being, <laughs> being in Australia, obviously. Um, oh sure. And being super isolated over in Australia, like so, we can't get over anywhere overseas. Um, even when I used to write, you know, um, back in the days when I was writing and just doing solo stuff, like I'd do all the writing and production myself. And then I would travel overseas and then I would work, you know, in a studio with other musicians, but it was always a solo thing. So, you know, migrating into what I'm doing now, like it's a lot of collaboration. It's like, yeah, like it's, it's, I'm really comfortable in the space. It's like kind of what I've always done. Like, so it's a, I guess for me, it's a strength, you know, like I'm, really comfortable working remotely um, and being a, um, a guy who likes being in his own space. I'm able to come up with a lot of ideas without a, a time constraint. Like mm -hmm. I can spend a, a week on a melody or however long and, until that it sounds right. So I, I, I don't, I don't like being limited by time or, um, you know, and also, you know, when, when I'm around, you know, a certain, you know, if there's other people in a room, it can, it can be really positive and fantastic um but same time i don't know i'm a i'm an introvert so i really enjoy having my own space and, sure. and just working on my own i just i think i'm that kind of guy i'm just i'm too easily distracted with people around me like if if my wife's like doing something like like having a day off i'll have a day off but yeah. if she's like <laughs> but if like she's working really hard on like her like university assessments and i'll go work really hard so like i'm so easily influenced by what other people are doing um uh -huh. i have to so working on my own is really good i can just like focus in and and, and get and go to work and like yeah i don't have to worry about that i love it that's cool i mean well again the song is amazing like you like you said jara you like it's funny you're talking about uh when you when you gel well with somebody you continue to work with them over and over so i'm, I'm guessing that yeah this this relationship will continue <laughs> and we <laughs> and we'll probably see some more songs from the from the three of you together that'd be amazing well it would be dope um <laughs> I think you, you don't need to know each other well i think in order to make like great music together like for example 
we watched this um, documentary about Miles Davis the other day on Netflix. And, you know, he was just like, always playing with different people i mean in the jazz world is it's it's pretty common you know you just get together you know the standards and then you just like use that form but you like you know like improvise and and incorporate your own style and you know like they he just called a bunch of guys you know and and set up a session and then they went into the studio and they didn't know each other, but the result was great, you know. So I think you can also apply that to any kind of music, also to electronic music, you know. It's just about, yeah, experience. And if, if yeah, your styles match or if you, like, um, yeah, are, like, on, on a, like, on the same kind of wave, like, vibe-wise, yeah. then then there's nothing, yeah, you don't need to like spend weeks in the studio together, you know? I love it. Yeah. Well, well, thank you guys so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. This has been awesome. Um, and then the rest of the records coming out, you said in next month? Right, June 18th, um, also going to be available on vinyl. Oh, yeah. rad. I'm going to have to order one of those. That's dope. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, guys. <laughs> What, yeah. what do you have anything else going on, uh, Panama? What are you What are you working on, Jara? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm um, sure you do. But I mean, like, is there anything coming out soon, or do you have any uh, record, a, a yeah. solo record uh, coming out? Uh, yeah. So, um, as far as like other you know things going on, there's like another like I don't, have you heard of an artist called Full Side? Yeah, I have. Yeah. Actually. Yeah, yeah. So we've um, we're finishing up on another another like single, which is really fun. So that's gonna be fun that's probably probably another six months down the track because like uh, his process is just pretty it's like he just goes through there's so many little things you gotta like like check for like full side sounds like there's like little full side pianos and like little like 303 sequences but you know as far as the song is concerned i think it's in a really good place so that's what's going to be coming out um i'll be working with another artist um called duke jamont um that's yeah. more in like the, the sort of like pop pop area um so we just we just started collaborating um then like a lot of other a lot of other um um things in the works too like a lot of um like uh left left field which is just like just things that are really interesting to explore that i'm looking forward to so yeah yeah a lot of things happening obviously yeah i love it awesome well thank you all so much for doing this i do have one more question i want to see if i can get an answer from each of you individually if uh you have any advice for aspiring artists? Mm, I think in the beginning, not to overthink everything, like going with like what you th what feels right and what you think is like the the best next step for you somehow. I love it. Um, yeah, I guess there are many <laughs> many things to say, um, but. Yeah, what helped us a lot, I think, was just to to do what you really like. I mean, it sounds super simple, but it's not mm. that simple to find out what you really want to do. You know, like some people would say, like, you need to find your sound, but this is like very abstract, I think. It's just like what you're into, like what, what would you do if you were on an island, let's say, and nobody would listen to, to your music, you know, or like if there weren't like streaming platforms or anything, like, I, like in the beginning, you shouldn't get distracted by the whole music industry thing and by numbers and what other people are doing, but just what would you like to do, you know? Because in the end, it comes down to that, I think. I love yeah. it. You got anything for us, Jara? Um, that's still pretty good. Like, every, every time <laughs> I try to say something like that, it comes off really cheesy. So <laughs> I always say that, like, just, like, pursue, you know, as far as if you're pursuing music, I just tend to, like, be guided by what makes me feel joy or happiness. Like, it doesn't mean that the music is particularly lighthearted, but... It, it can usually tell because you go into like a, a tunnel where like an eight, eight hours will pass and it doesn't feel like, you know, half an hour has, has gone past. So 
you know, when you find that place where it's like really easy to work, it's like the time passes um, and you, and you, and you come out of it in a really like um, meditative state where you've come out like, like you've just had like a meditation for hours um, and you feel really relaxed. That's genuinely when I know I'm in the right place. So I can only relate to how I feel. And hopefully if other people can understand what I'm saying, that's, that's probably the good place to be. Bring me the bad word.